The Notorious B. I. G. Christopher George Latore Wallace, May 21, 1972, March 9, 1997, better known by his stage names The Notorious Big, Biggie Smalls, or simply Biggie, was an American rapper and songwriter. Rooted in the New York rap scene and gangster rap traditions, he is widely considered one of the greatest rappers of all time. Wallace became known for his distinctive laid-back lyrical delivery, offsetting the lyrics often grim content. His music was often semi-autobiographical, telling of hardship and criminality, but also of debauchery and celebration. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York City, Wallace signed to Sean Puffy Combs's label Bad Boy Records as it launched in 1993, and gained exposure through features on several other artists' singles that year. His debut album Ready to Die 1994, was met with widespread critical acclaim, and included his signature songs Juicy and Big Papa. The album made him the central figure in East Coast hip-hop, and restored New York's visibility at a time when the West Coast hip-hop scene was dominating hip-hop music. Wallace was awarded the 1995 Billboard Music Awards Rapper of the Year. The following year, he led his protege group Junior MAFIA, a team of himself and longtime friends, including Lil' Kim, to chart success. During 1996, while recording his second album, Wallace became ensnarled in the escalating East Coast-West Coast, Coast hip-hop feud. Following Tupac Shakur's death in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas in September 1996, Speculations of involvement in Shakur's murder by criminal elements orbiting the bad boy circle circulated as a result of Wallace's public feud with Shakur. On March 9, 1997, while visiting Los Angeles, Wallace was murdered in a drive-by shooting. The assailant remains unidentified. Wallace's second album Life After Death, a double album, was released two weeks later. It reached number one on the Billboard 200, and eventually achieved a diamond certification in the U.S. With two more posthumous albums released, Wallace has certified sales of over 28 million copies in the United States, including 21 million albums. Rolling Stone has called him the greatest rapper that ever lived, and Billboard named him the greatest rapper of all time. The Source magazine named him the greatest rapper of all time in its 150th issue. In 2006, MTV ranked him at no. 3 on their list of the greatest MCS of all time, calling him possibly the most skillful ever on the mic. In 2020, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Life and Career 1972-1991, early life Wallace was born at St. Mary's Hospital in the Brooklyn borough of New York City on May 21, 1972, the only child of Jamaican immigrant parents. His mother, Voletta Wallace, was a preschool teacher, while his father, Selwyn George Latore, was a welder and politician. His father left the family when Wallace was two years old, and his mother worked two jobs while raising him. Wallace grew up at 226 St. James Place in Brooklyn's Clinton Hill, near the border with Bedford Stuyvesant. Raised Catholic, Wallace excelled at Queen of All Saints Middle School, winning several awards as an English student. He attended St. Peter Claver Church in the borough. He was nicknamed Big because he was overweight by the age of 10. Wallace claimed to have begun dealing drugs at about age 12. His mother, often at work, first learned of this during his adulthood. He began rapping as a teenager, entertaining people on the streets, and performed with local groups, the Old Gold Brothers as well as the Techniques. His earliest stage name was McQuest. At his request, Wallace transferred from Bishop Laughlin Memorial High School in Fort Greene to George Westinghouse Career and Technical Education High School in downtown Brooklyn, which future rappers DMX, Jay-Z, and Busta Rhymes were also attending. According to his mother, Wallace was still a good student but developed a smart-ass attitude at the new school. At age 17, Wallace dropped out of school and became more involved in crime. In 1989, he was arrested on weapons charges in Brooklyn and sentenced to five years probation. In 1990, he was arrested on a violation of his probation. A year later, Wallace was arrested in North Carolina for dealing crack cocaine. He spent nine months in jail before making bail. 1991-1994, early career and first child after release from jail, Wallace made a demo tape, Microphone Murderer, while calling himself Biggie Smalls, 
alluding both to Calvin Lockhart's character in the 1975 film Let's Do It Again and to his own stature and obesity, 6 feet 3 inches, 1.91 meters and 300 to 380 pounds, 140 dash 170 kilograms. Although Wallace reportedly lacked real ambition for the tape, local DJ Mr. C, of Big Daddy Kane and Juice Crew Association, discovered and promoted it, thus it was heard by the Source Rap Magazine's editor in 1992. In March, the Source column, Unsigned Hype, dedicated to airing promising rappers, featured Wallace. He then spun the attention into a recording. Upon hearing the demo tape, Sean, Puffy, Combs, still with the A&R department of Uptown Records, arranged to meet Wallace. Promptly signed to Uptown, Wallace appeared on La Belle Mate's Heavy D and the Boys' 1993 song, A Bunch of Niggas. Mid-year, or a year after Wallace's signing, Uptown fired Combs, who, a week later, launched Bad Boy Records, instantly Wallace's new label. On August 8, 1993, Wallace's longtime girlfriend gave birth to his first child, Tiana, although the couple had split by then. A high school dropout, Wallace promised his daughter everything she wanted, in his reasoning that if he had had the same in childhood, he would have graduated at the top of his class. Although he continued dealing drugs, Combs discovered that it obliged him to quit. Later that year, Wallace gained exposure on a remix of Mary J. Blige's single, Real Love. Having found his moniker Biggie Smalls already claimed, he took a new one, holding for good, the notorious Big, the Real Love remix single was followed by another remix of a Mary J. Blige song, What's the 411? Wallace's successes continued, if to a lesser extent, on remixes of Nina Cherry's song, Buddy X and a reggae artist Super Cat song, Dolly My Baby, also featuring Combs, all in 1993. In April, Wallace's solo track, Party and Bullshit, was released on the Who's the Man? soundtrack. In July 1994, he appeared alongside LL Cool J and Busta Rhymes on a remix of his own labelmate Craig Max, Flava in Your Ear, the remix reaching No. 9 on the Billboard Hot 100. 1994, Ready to Die and Marriage to Faith Evans On August 4, 1994, Wallace married R&B singer Faith Evans, whom he had met at a Bat Boy photoshoot. Five days later, Wallace had his first pop chart success as a solo artist with Double Aside, Juicy Unbelievable, which reached No. 27 as the lead single to his debut album. Ready to Die was released on September 13, 1994. It reached No. 13 on the Billboard 200 chart and was eventually certified four times platinum. The album shifted attention back to East Coast hip-hop at a time when West Coast hip-hop dominated U.S. charts. It gained strong reviews and has received much praise in retrospect. In addition to Juicy, the record produced two hit singles, the platinum-selling Big Papa, which reached number one on the US rap chart, and One More Chance, which sold 1.1 million copies in 1995. Buster Rhymes claimed to have seen Wallace giving out free copies of Ready to Die from his home, which Rhymes reasoned as his way of marketing himself. Around the time of the album's release, Wallace became friends with fellow rapper Tupac Shakur. Cousin Lil Cease recalled the pair as close, often traveling together whenever they were not working. According to him, Wallace was a frequent guest at Shakur's home and they spent time together when Shakur was in California or Washington, D.C. Ukemuth, an Oakland MC, claimed that Wallace's style was inspired by Shakur. Wallace also befriended basketball player Shaquille O'Neal. O'Neal said they were introduced during a listening session for Gimme the Loot. Wallace mentioned him in the lyrics and thereby attracted O'Neal to his music. O'Neal requested a collaboration with Wallace, which resulted in the song You Can't Stop the Rain. According to Combs, Wallace would not collaborate with anybody he didn't really respect and that Wallace paid O'Neal his respect by shouting him out. In 2015, Days Dillinger, a frequent Shaker collaborator, said that he and Wallace were cool, with Wallace traveling to meet him to smoke cannabis and record two songs. 1995, Junior MAFIA, Conspiracy and Coastal Feud In August 1995, Wallace's protege group, Junior MAFIA, Junior Masters at Finding Intelligent Attitudes, released their debut album Conspiracy. The group consisted of his friends from childhood and included rappers such as Lil' Kim and Lil' Cease, who went on to have solo careers. The record went gold and its singles, 
Player's Anthem and Get Money, both featuring Wallace, went gold and platinum. Wallace continued to work with R&B artists, collaborating with R&B groups 112 on Only You and Total on Can't You See, with both reaching the top 20 of the Hot 100. By the end of the year, Wallace was the top-selling male solo artist and rapper on the US pop and R&B charts. In July 1995, he appeared on the cover of The Source with the caption, The King of New York Takes Over, a reference to his alias Frank White, based on a character from the 1990 film King of New York. At The Source Awards in August 1995, he was named Best New Artist, Solo, Lyricist of the Year, Live Performer of the Year, and his debut album of the year. At the Billboard Awards, he was Rap Artist of the Year. In his year of success, Wallace became involved in a rivalry between the East and West Coast hip-hop scenes with Shucker, now his former friend. In an interview with Vibe in April 1995, while serving time in Clinton Correctional Facility, Shucker accused Uptown Records founder Andre Harrell, Sean Combs, and Wallace of having prior knowledge of a robbery that resulted in him being shot five times and losing thousands of dollars worth of jewelry on the night of November 30, 1994. Though Wallace and his entourage were in the same Manhattan-based recording studio at the time of the shooting, they denied the accusation. Wallace said, it just happened to be a coincidence that he, Shucker, was in the studio. He just, he couldn't really say who really had something to do with it at the time. So he just kinda leaned the blame on me. In 2012, a man named Dexter Isaac, serving a life sentence for unrelated crimes, claimed that he attacked Shucker that night and that a robbery was orchestrated by entertainment industry executive and former drug trafficker, James Rosemond. Following his release from prison, Shucker signed to Death Row Records on October 15, 1995. This made Bad Boy Records and Death Row business rivals, and thus intensified the quarrel. 1996, collaboration with Michael Jackson, more arrests, accusations regarding Shucker's death, and second child Wallace began recording his second studio album in September 1995 over 18 months in New York City, Trinidad, and Los Angeles. The recording was interrupted by injury, legal disputes, and a highly publicized hip-hop dispute. During this time, Wallace also worked with pop singer Michael Jackson on the album History. 54, Lil Cees later claimed that while Wallace met Jackson, he was forced to stay behind, with Wallace citing that he did not trust Michael with kids following the 1993 child sexual abuse allegations against Jackson. Engineer John Van Nest and producer Dallas Austin recalled the sessions differently, saying that Wallace was eager to meet Jackson and nearly burst into tears upon doing so. On March 23, 1996, Wallace was arrested outside a Manhattan nightclub for chasing and threatening to kill two fans seeking autographs, smashing the windows of their taxi cab, and punching one of them. He pleaded guilty to second-degree harassment and was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. In mid-1996, he was arrested at his home in Teaneck, New Jersey, for drug and weapons possession charges. In June 1996, Shucker released Hit Em Up, a diss track in which he claimed to have had sex with Faith Evans, who was estranged from Wallace at the time, and that Wallace had copied his style and image. Wallace referenced the first claim on Jay-Z's Brooklyn's Finest, in which he raps, if Faye have twins, she'd probably have two packs. Get it? Two packs. However, he did not directly respond to the track, stating in a 1997 radio interview that it was not his style to respond. On September 7, 1996, Shucker was shot multiple times in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas and died six days later. Rumors of Wallace's involvement with Shucker's murder spread. In a 2002 Los Angeles Times series titled Who Killed Tupac Shucker? Based on police reports and multiple sources, Chuck Phillips reported that the shooting was carried out by a Compton gang, the Southside Crips, to avenge a beating by Shucker hours earlier, and that Wallace had paid for the gun. Los Angeles Times editor Mark Duvois and wrote that Phillips' story has withstood all challenges to its accuracy, and remains the definitive account of the Shucker slaying. Wallace's family denied the report, producing documents purporting to show that he was in New York and New Jersey at the time. However, the New York Times called the documents inconclusive, 
Starting, the pages purport to be three computer printouts from Daddy's house, indicating that Wallace was in the studio recording a song called Nasty Boy on the Night Shucker was shot. They indicate that Wallace wrote half the session, was in and out sat around and laid down a ref, shorthand for a reference vocal, the equivalent of a first take. But nothing indicates when the documents were created. And Louis Alfred, the recording engineer listed on the sheets, said in an interview that he remembered recording the song with Wallace in a late night session, not during the day. He could not recall the date of the session, but said it was likely not the night Shucker was shot. We would have heard about it, Mr. Alfred said. Evans remembered her husband calling her on the night of Shucker's death and crying from shock. She said, I think it's fair to say he was probably afraid, given everything that was going on at that time and all the hype that was put on this so-called beef that he didn't really have in his heart against anyone. Wayne Barrow, Wallace's co-manager at the time, said Wallace was recording the track Nasty Girl the night Shucker was shot. Shortly after Shucker's death, he met with Snoop Dogg, who claimed that Wallace played the song Somebody Gotta Die for him, in which Snoop Dogg was mentioned, and declared he never hated Shucker. On October 29, 1996, Evans gave birth to Wallace's son, Christopher C.J. Wallace Jr. The following month, Junior MAFIA member Lil' Kim released her debut album, Hardcore, under Wallace's direction while the two were having a love affair. Lil' Kim recalled being Wallace's biggest fan and his pride and joy. In a 2012 interview, Lil' Kim said Wallace had prevented her from making a remix of the Joe Dessa single Love You For Life by locking her in a room. According to her, Wallace said that she was not gonna go do no song with them, likely because of the group's affiliation with Tupac and Death Row Records. 1997, Life After Death and Car Accident During the recording for his second album, Life After Death, Wallace and Lil Cease were arrested for smoking marijuana in public and had their car repossessed. Wallace chose a Chevrolet Lumina rental car as a substitute, despite Lil Cease's objections. The car had brake problems but Wallace dismissed them. The car collided with a rail, shattering Wallace's left leg and Lil Cease's jaw. Wallace spent months in a hospital following the accident. He was temporarily confined to a wheelchair, forced to use a cane, and had to complete therapy. Despite his hospitalization, he continued to work on the album. The accident was referred to in the lyrics of, Long Kiss Goodnight, You Still Tickle Me, I Used To Be As Strong As Ripple Be Till Lil Cease Crippled Me. In January 1997, Wallace was ordered to pay 41 US dollars, 000 in damages following an incident involving a friend of a concert promoter who claimed Wallace and his entourage beat him following a dispute in May 1995. He faced criminal assault charges for the incident, which remains unresolved, but all robbery charges were dropped. Following the events, Wallace spoke of a desire to focus on his peace of mind and his family and friends. Death. Main article, Murder of the Notorious Big in February 1997, Wallace traveled to California to promote life after death and record a music video for its lead single, Hypnotize. On March 5th, he gave a radio interview with a doghouse on Kyle in San Francisco. In the interview, he stated that he had hired a security detail because he feared for his safety, but that this was due to being a celebrity figure in general and not specifically because he was a rapper. On March 7th, Wallace presented an award to Tony Braxton at the 11th Annual Soul Train Music Awards in Los Angeles and was booed by some of the audience. The following evening, March 8th, he then attended an after-party hosted by Vibe and Quest Records at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Guests included Evans, Aaliyah, Combs, and members of the Crips and Bloods gangs. The next day at 12.30 am Pacific Standard Time, after the fire department closed the party early due to overcrowding, Wallace left with his entourage into GMC Suburbans to return to his hotel. He traveled in the front passenger seat alongside associates Damien D. Rock, Butler, Lil Cease, and driver Gregory G. Money Young. Combs traveled in the other vehicle with three bodyguards. The two trucks were trailed by a Chevrolet Blazer carrying bad boy director of security Paul Ford. By 12.45 am, comma, the streets were crowded with people leaving the party. Wallace's truck stopped at a red light 50 yards 46 meters from the Peterson Automotive Museum, and a black Chevy Impala pulled up alongside it. The Impala's driver, an unidentified African-American man dressed in a blue suit and bow tie, 
rolled down his window, drew a 9mm blue steel pistol, and fired at Wallace's car. Four bullets hit Wallace and his entourage subsequently rushed him to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where doctors performed an emergency thoracotomy, but he was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. He was 24 years old. His autopsy, which was released 15 years after his death, showed that only the final shot was fatal. It entered through his right hip and struck his colon, liver, heart, and left lung before stopping in his left shoulder. Wallace's funeral was held at the Frank E. Campbell Funeral Chapel in Manhattan on March 18. There were around 350 mourners at the funeral, including Lil Cease, Queen Latifah, Flava Flav, Mary J. Blige, Lil Kim, Run DMC, DJ Cool Herc, Chirech, Busta Rhymes, Salt and Pepper, DJ Spinderella, Foxy Brown, and Sister Sulja. David Dinkins and Clive Davis also attended the funeral. After the funeral, his body was cremated and the ashes were given to his family.